Happy Monday, Monday. Happy Monday morning, you all. How are you all doing? This is your girl, Shan. I hope and pray that you all had an amazing weekend. That's one thing you always going to hear me say, an amazing, relaxing weekend. And I hope you all was amazing and relaxing. Now, I'm going to talk about our church announcements. We want you all to join us tonight. This will be our last live for the month of Marriage Mondays with the Kings. We are going to continue on with Mental Health Awareness Month. And tonight's topic, we're going to be talking about mental health in our children. Good morning, mental health in our children. Anybody who is a parent, um, especially if you got children that's still in a home, we encourage you to definitely listen in on tonight. Join in. We will be live on both Facebook and YouTube at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to be on KRGN 98.5 FM for those who want to listen via radio and any other platforms that you want to listen to. Just go to our website, marriagemondayswiththekings.com. Click on the Listen Here tab, and it's a whole bunch of other um, ways that you can listen in. But this is what I want to speak to you all on this morning. And I hope that you not only, and I'm not going to just say hope, but pray that you not only take it this morning and process it, but also process it through the rest of the week. Being that we're talking about Mental Health Awareness Month, let me tell y'all something. Let me tell you what I know. There are so many good morning family. There are so many who are legit suffering in silence, okay? Like legit. That's why I believe that God had me and my husband go deeper. We've talked to the pastor. That was the first week we have spoke with um two therapists. One was marriage and family, another one life licensed professional where they spoke about identity, trauma, and different things like that. And then we had LGBTQ. We spoke with a therapist in reference to that population. And the thing that I believe that everybody got out of watching last Monday's show was that God called us to love. You know what I'm saying? We may not agree with a lot of things in the world. We don't have to bash people, but God called us to love. So this morning, what I wanted to speak about is going deeper. You know, looking at the deep root of whatever the issue is. This is one thing that I've learned, and this is one thing that I stopped doing. One of the most common emotions that we deal with as individuals, probably nine times out of ten, if we could be really transparent, good morning, is anger. Is anger. And so one of the things that I challenge myself to do in this year, because it's a lot of stuff. Come on, y'all. We can't just act like that the world is back to normal. Let's just be real. Good morning, honey. And let's live in the reality. Okay? We need to quit playing ourselves. So in order to stop playing ourselves, we got to get to the deeper root of things and we got to do the work. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to marriages... A lot of husbands and wives don't want to have the deep-rooted conversations. I mean the serious deep-rooted conversations. The things that if you go deep enough, it can affect change. If you really find out why it is that you act the way that you do, it can really affect change for the better in your marriage. And so what happens is a lot of married couples have superficial marriages. That just means you stay on the surface, you pretend and act like everything is good, and oh, this is the way we've been doing it for years. Well, if that works for you, that's what worked for you. But again, it irritates me when you have me and my husband where God has called us to advocate for marriage, family, community, and different things like that, but then you got people that's putting a negative connotation on marriage. So my question is, is it the marriage or is it you? That's the thing. And see, a lot of people get mad at me when I'm always talking about examining yourself. Let me tell you something. If you want to go deeper in your marriage, you have to go deeper in yourself. That'll preach by itself. If you want to go deeper in your marriage, you have to go deeper within yourself. Once I started doing the work, number one, that, that emotion, anger. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not going to lie to you and act like I'm holy in it now. And I think that's where a lot of people operate in that word that we've been speaking about on our show called spiritual bypass. You sitting up here not wanting to see the reality because you so super spiritual. You see what I'm saying? But we live in this fleshly body, so we really got to look at the things that are going on. We can't continue to float on cloud nine and then we get mad at everybody around us to include our spouse when things don't work the way that we think that they should. So this this is what I encourage you all to do. My thing was anger. Okay. Baby, somebody came to me and talked to me sideways. Before I knew it, I was laying hands. 
I'm too old for that right now. You know what I'm saying? I am too old for that. I don't want to go back to that. And Lord knows I don't ever want to have to lay my hands on anybody. It shouldn't be no reason. And in order for me not to catch a case, what I had to do was start examining myself on a deeper level. So something set up and made me mad, which is kind of rare because I don't really let stuff get to me. But if something made me mad, then I set up and ask myself before I react, before I say anything, Shan, why are you mad? And see, at this level, when you ask yourself, you got to be real with yourself. So let's talk about the husbands and wives for a minute. You know what I'm saying? And you all who are single, you can kind of adapt to this too. You can use it in any other type of relationship that you have. Family, friends, church members, people at work, whatever the case may be. But ask yourself, are you mad at Why are you mad? And be real with yourself. Because what we do in this stage is we blame everybody else around us. It's the boss's fault. It's the pastor's fault. It's my parents' fault. The reason why I turned out the way I did. It's these kids' fault. Maybe I shouldn't have never had them in the first place. Good morning, honey. This is what we do. It's time for us. We are too grown to be sitting up here blaming anybody else. Okay? Because we'll set up and when we don't want to blame the people around us, we'll start blaming our husband and wife. And that's unfair. That is unfair. You see what I'm saying? But don't nobody want to talk to me on this morning. Some of us, because we don't want to take a deeper level and get to the root of whatever the issue is, and we want to blame everybody around us when we can't blame everybody else because we're too busy pretending like our world is perfect. And everything in our life is perfect. We blame our spouse behind closed doors. That's why husbands and wives have so many arguments. You see what I'm saying? That's why your kids, what we was talking about is confused, especially for those of you that are in the church. You see what I'm saying? Because just like uh, Matt said last week when we was talking about the LBGTQ population is what happens is, and I love when he said this, good morning, bro. What happens is we'll set up her as parents and we'll act so spiritual in the church. We'll act so spiritual when we go, oh, God bless you, a uh, uh, man, a woman, a uh, God, <laughs> God bless you. We're doing all this kind of foolishness, but at home, the kids are confused. That's what Matt said last week. I said, God, dog, you better speak on it because that's what it is. The kids are confused because you acting super spiritual. You laying hands on everybody. You giving advice, but you ignore what's going on in your house or you acting a fool. And so the kids are sitting up her like, if this is God what they see their parents do. If this is God, and this is how Christians supposed to act, I don't want none of this. And so we sit up here and wonder why it is that the younger people are not getting married. Older people are coming down on the younger people. Why you ain't married yet? Well, what's wrong with you? you don't you want to settle down and have some kids? How about you mind your own business? How about you get to the root of your stuff? And that goes to point number two. People who are not willing to go deeply rooted to the root of their stuff of why they feel the way that they feel, then what they do is they set up and try to control everybody else around them. And then when the people around them don't operate in their spirit of control, which I'm going to take it to the Bible and say witchcraft and manipulation, then you set up here and you get mad at them. Oh, I can't stand you. You will have a whole bunch of people who don't even know an individual set up and talk about somebody that they don't even know all because of what they heard you say. Now, let me tell you this. A real heel person, a real healed person. I'm talking about somebody who has actually did the work. I'm talking about somebody who's really sought God. Somebody who's really got into the scriptures. Somebody who's cried out before God and said, God, I'm sick and tired of being in the situation I'm in. Or like the old folks say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Somebody who actually said, I can't handle this on my own. Because as I go deeper and I start to Peel back the onion layers. I'm starting to find out some things about myself. I'm starting to find out some things that shouldn't have happened maybe in my childhood. I'm starting to find out some things that I was getting taken advantage of. And the next step to kind of doing the work, if you can't process it on your own, which it is nothing wrong with that. Because I couldn't. I took my tail to counseling. You see what I'm saying? And this is another thing. Let me tell y'all some husbands and wives. I need y'all to stop doing this. Y'all feel free to share. Hit that share button, baby. Because this right here irritates the whole mess out of me. Stop threatening your husband or your wife to go to counseling. Okay? Well, if you don't go to counseling, I'm going to leave you. Well, I'm going to listen. If you're going to be man or woman enough to leave, be man or woman enough to leave. But you threatening your spouse to go to counseling when they're not ready is not going to do your marriage any good. Okay? Talk to somebody who actually know. And I know because I've seen it. You got mainly wives 
who threaten their husband, you better go to counseling with me or we better go to marriage counseling or we not going to have no marriage. Stop doing that. I encourage you as a wife to take it to the Lord in prayer. I encourage you as a wife, like I say, to get to know yourself on a deeper level. Let me talk to some of these ladies. Now listen, somebody recommended that I watch this show called Put a Ring on It. And it's on the Oprah Winfrey Network. I'm in season two of this show because I was like, man, I ain't watching this foolishness. But it intrigued my, th my inner therapist, okay? So I was like, okay, let me watch this. And the thing is that I always see women do. Number one, if you choose, because it's a choice, to stay with a guy in a long-term relationship and secretly you want to get married, stop getting mad at that guy. Because one of the things, and let me, the men, the men, where y'all at up on here, okay? I ain't trying to knock nobody, but this is what my husband told me. And before I used to kick it with the homies and stuff, I used to hear them say, a man know what they want and it don't take them all day to let you know if it's you. Okay, that's what I heard. It don't take you year. A man know what they want when they want it. That's what the men have been sharing in my life. So with that being said, ladies, single ladies, when you get to knowing who you are, okay, single men, brothers, when you get to knowing who you are and not being afraid to go deeper within yourself to truly learn who you are as an individual, to truly learn God's purpose for your life, to truly learn what God created for you to be. When you go deeper within yourself, I'm telling you, that marriage will be healed for the better because you're going to have a different mindset. You have to do some work. You know what I'm saying? How the word of God says, renewing your mind daily. Baby, going back to my anger, right? I be ready to, I used to be ready to swing on folks. I wasn't one to be bumping guns, baby. I was swinging. That's just what it was. Let's be real. You know what I'm saying? But I said, I'm too grown for that. I don't want to catch a case. I want to be a good example for my children and whatever the case may be. They ain't never seen their mama go to jail. Thank you, Jesus. But with that being said, I had to ask myself, why am I angry? I didn't want to blame the people around me because I was tired of doing that. You see what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, God, help me to understand where this is coming from. And you won't get your answer right away most of the times. God will show you different things or God will bring things back to your remembrance. And those nine times out of ten are surface things that we display, such as anger. The root cause is something that we chose to suppress and not deal with. Something that we have chose to suppress and not deal with. Something that we were chose to bury and not deal with. That's why I say you got to go deeper within yourself. Because one thing that my husband told me and I thought was amazing. We're coming up on 24 years of marriage. Is he said, I love the woman that you become. Now he loved the woman who I was back in the day who was a hot ghetto mess. You see what I'm saying? When anger issues and everything like that. But when, when I worked on myself, when I said, God, show me what you have for me and going to a deeper level. When somebody set up here and, and they do something purposely to try to make me mad because I, I know the gift that God has placed inside of me, I can look and see that's not the issue. The issue is way deeper and it's something that they got wrong within themselves. Something that they not willing to deal with. So I don't allow people to anger me anymore. My environment is a place of peace. How many of you all actually have a true place of peace? I'm not talking about your place of peace is work because you have to get away from home or whatever the case may be. I'm talking about when you come into your house, you're happy to be there because the atmosphere is amazing. It's relaxing and you have worked to get there. Husbands and wives, I choose I choose to encourage you to tell you to go deeper. See, we act a fool just as people in general because we choose to act a fool. But what is the real reason why we act in a fool? When somebody triggers us, okay, because everybody's not a narcissist. I'll get to that in a minute. Boy, I'm so tired of y'all using that on social media. I'm going to need y'all to go and find out what a true narcissist is and quit labeling people because you not labeling people a narcissist and you might be the, the narcissist, okay? But there is only a 1% of the population who are true narcissists. Why y'all out there using that term like you got some, some medical background or whatever? Yeah, this person's a narcissist. That person a narcissist. Get up off of these cliches when you don't know what it means 
seen and do some research. Go deeper. You see what I'm saying? Actually know what you're talking about before you put it out there in the atmosphere. Quit trying to get people up off of you, which is something else that Matt talked about last week, the counselor that we had on the show. What people tend to do is when you don't want to go deep and do the work that you need to do with you, you get people up off of you by talking about somebody else. Come on, somebody. Y'all labeling people narcissists. It may be some bipolar going on, some multiple personalities, and all them types of things. Those who are in the spiritual realm or, you know, church, holy to now, whatever. Oh, that means they got uh, demons in them. When they got all these multiple voices and all this other kind of stuff, whatever you want to call it, do the deeper work. Because when you do the deeper work, this is what I found about myself. Let me talk about me for a minute. When somebody try to trigger me because I've done the work and I'm a healthier version of who I am because I've done the work, then I can sit up and say, hmm, now I'll say you're not going to give me today. No, you're not going to do that. And some people say, did you call me the devil? Whatever you want to call it, you acting like one of his imps. See, that's my problem. It's his mouth too. So one was anger, two is his mouth, and I'm trying to do better and speak love, but I'll call a spade a spade. So ask yourself. Why are you not willing to go deep within yourself? Why are you calling things healed in your life that was traumatic for you that you never did the work to heal? Why are you operating out of spiritual bypass and you trying to be busy and all these things? Oh, I got to do this. Oh, you act like can't nobody do nothing without you. You super busy. Have y'all ever met them people? Oh, let me go in and call you back because I got sisters sis, sis calling in. They try to make themselves more than what they are. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Operate deeper within yourself. Because I'm telling you, for a woman, and let me talk about it for a minute, who has done the work within herself, she knows how confident she is, whether you be single or married. Baby, you know what you're going to accept in life and what you not. You see what I'm saying? You know what a healthy, functioning relationship may look like because you've done work within yourself. So when you do work within yourself, then you can move and operate in a healthier way. You will identify those red flags for yourself because everybody's red flags is not the same. For a man, <clears throat> let me holler at you for a second. I'm just going to keep it all the way real when I say this. When you do the work on yourself, when you say I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, when you say I no longer want to think, and this can go men or women, that I'm going to operate from the past of what I've seen, what a marriage is supposed to look like. Ask y'all selves. This is what I want to ask you while you put your mouth on marriage. How many of you all had a healthy, not people who faked it, not people who just stayed together to death do their part, grandma, grandma and them, but a healthy marriage as an example. How many of y'all had that display for y'all? So you sitting there and put your mouth on marriage, but you don't even know what a healthy marriage would look like. And you sitting there fighting with your spouse and stuff like that, trying to say what a marriage look like based off a fairy tale in your head. Don't nobody want to hear that on this morning. But when a man works on himself, when you go and you dig deeper, and when you get to the point, and it's not easy, this process is not easy, but you got to go through the process if you want to get the promise, okay? But for a man, that is something kind of sexy. When you go and say, you know what, baby? I got to do the work on myself because you know doggone good and well is probably something from your past. Your daddy abandoned, uh, uh, your mama didn't want you, whatever the case may be, and you don't want to deal with it. But when you go and deal with that thing, sir, bro, that thing is some kind of sexy, you hear me? Because not only are you operating out of your intellectual mind, because that's what men do. It ain't emotional. Women are emotional. Men operate out of their intellectual mind. So when you think it intellectually, you don't want to connect with your feelings and your emotions. That's what we as a people need to start doing. Learning how to. If something make you mad, be mad for a moment. You see what I'm saying? Don't stay there. If something make you happy, rejoice in it. Because when you can connect with your emotions, then you can start to communicate with others about what make you mad, what make you sad, what make you happy, whatever. If you're feeling low, if you're feeling depressed, just call that thing what it is. Not that you're speaking into existence, but you're letting somebody around you know that you need help. There is, you know, I ain't going to say no, no reason to take it to the extreme. But when you work on yourself, you get, allow yourself to get in contact with your emotions. Because I'm going to tell you something that I did as a soldier. 
one of the things that I feel that they kind of teach us for those of us who serve in the military is you got to be straight faced all the time. And there were things that I would do to make it through deployments or field problems or whatever. I would separ I would say I'm warming up, I'm bossing up, and I would separate myself from my emotions because I didn't want to leave my family. I didn't want to leave my son or whatever the case may be. And sometimes we continue on after we get out of the military and we do the same thing in our civilian lives now that we're no longer in the military. I did that to get through a rough situation that happened last year and it wasn't personal to, it was personal to our family, but it wasn't my immediate family. I went in a soldier mode. That's what I did, which I wouldn't allow myself to feel. I soldiered up and did what I had to do to accomplish the mission, but then I ended up kind of hurting myself. You see what I'm saying? And so... I don't know why I'm speaking about this. Some of y'all who are serving in the military don't do this. When it, You could be a soldier when you get in front of everybody else. But when you get home, allow yourself to feel your emotions. Or if you're going through something, anybody, if you're going through something, allow yourself to feel your emotions and be in that moment and process what you got to process. Because if you don't do it, you're going to end up toxic behavior, sitting up here having sex with random people, sitting up here doing uh, drugs and sitting up here, you know, turning up with alcohol and whatever the case may be. You're doing all these things to numb yourself so you don't have to feel what's going on within yourself. So I don't know who this was for on this morning, but like I always say, whatever God places on my heart, that's what I'm going to talk about. And I'm going to keep it real too, as he allowed me to, so he can get the glory. So I encourage y'all, if y'all ain't got nothing else out of what I said this morning, Work on yourself. Get to a deeper level of yourself. Baby, me working on a deeper level of myself, I'm more confident in myself. I feel more confident as a wife. I feel more confident as a mother. How many of y'all can say that? I ain't talking about that fake confidence, baby. I'm talking about that true confidence. And when you know you have healed in areas of your life is when things that used to you would almost catch a case behind, when that can no longer get you to that point. You see what I'm saying? You don't allow people to get under your skin. I'd be like, oh, God bless you. I pray for you. Prayers is free. I used to say that all the time when I started doing live seven years ago. I pray for you because prayers is free. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart and not trying to be sarcastic. So y'all get to who you are, the depth, the core, the purpose of why God created you to be who you are. It's probably more than what your mind think right now. God created me to do do this for such a time as this, but I'm walking in my purpose, not because something that Shan wanted to do, but what he wanted to do by using me and my husband to be examples of the things that we went through so y'all don't have to go through it, okay? So y'all have a blessed week. Join us tonight, Marriage Mondays with the Kings. We are going to be talking about mental health and our children. If you have children, want to have children, if you have children that's under the age of 18 is still in the home. We encourage you to listen tonight. We're going to have two therapists on tonight who are marriage and family and marriage, family, and child counselors. So you can listen, Kara Jean, 98.5 at Family, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We will be live from Facebook and our YouTube channel. So either one you can go to to listen in where we will be live. Or if you like podcasts, then go to Marriage Mondays with the Kings and click on the uh, listen here. And then we got a myriad of podcasts as well. So God bless you all. I will not be on next week because y'all know my rule. If it's a federal holiday in the United States and the federal employees is off, the Kings are off. <laughs> so I will join y'all back in two weeks with whatever it is that God places on my heart. God bless you all. Blessings to you. And remember, start doing the work. God bless.